Welcome back and thanks for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it. Today we're doing something a little different. I usually just work on four-wheel drives and uh, Jeeps and stuff like that. But a friend of mine's doing a restoration on a 63 Corvette and he said the posse's not holding. So he wanted me to take this apart, look at it, and I like people like this. Do what you would do if it's your car or your hot rod. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, that being said, most people anymore, if you take anything into a shop because they're afraid of how to rebuild something, they will replace everything in here with an exchange unit or they'll do it themselves and replace every piece of, of hardware in here. Now, these early GM differentials, this Corvette works just like the full-size axles, except the stub shafts. The other cars will have an axle tube, but these still retain with a C-clip. They have their float bearing here instead of out at the end of the axle tube. So, so basically, this is just like any other GM rear axle, except the tubes are really short. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it. Um, the part that wears out on these posies is the clutch packs or the retaining springs. And those retaining springs push out on the side gears, holding those clutches and those clutches get friction oil in them. Uh, it'll allow some slippage. Uh, you also have to use the right kind of oil in them or it'll eat them up real good. Now, I've uh, looked at this one and I don't think we're gonna need anything other than uh, rebuilding the either the clutches or the springs. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is remove the cover, drain the oil. Uh, in this case, the cover is what mounts it to the chassis. In the car, it would just be the tin cover. Once you're open, you can see the springs that hold the side gears apart. And just like all other differentials, you want to mark the bearing caps so that you have up, down, left, right. These are line board. Then you can take out the uh, centering pin and access the C-clips. In this case, uh, these axles have snap rings instead of C-clips, but they work the exact same way. They just retain the axle. I don't mind removing stuff with impacts, but when you assemble it, make sure you torque them. Once you have the carrier out, you can start popping the springs out of the posi, and these are only the 200 pound springs, so they're fairly easy compared to the 800 pound springs, which we're gonna put back in this one. You have to work at the back springs a little bit more. This has a small window in the back, but large window ones are a whole lot easier to do. Back springs are a little tougher to get out. Kind of a bit, actually. But, we're out. So just turning the side gears will pull the spider gears out so you can remove them. And then it'll take all the load off, so. And once you have the spider gears out, then you can remove the side gears and the clutches. However, because of the size of the side gear and the clutches, you will end up having to remove the ring gear on almost all of these. I've never been able to wiggle one out. These are the clutch keepers. You can use a mallet to start working the uh, ring gear down, then you can use a pry bar and work it down. Just don't want to use a hard hammer. Pop the ring gear off and set it aside. The side gears will literally fall out. Um, there's enough room in that window. Try to keep them uh, left right oriented and keep the clutches on the side gears they came out of, at least until after inspection. Now, I will disclose this differential was rebuilt right before I got it. I don't think it has even been used or if it has, it hasn't been used much. Um, they did put new clutch packs and steels in it. And you can see those gears on the side gear. Those 
lock into the frictions and then the steels lock into the carrier housing and then the friction between the two is what gives these the bite. But after I inspected all of these, I did verify that these are pretty much brand new clutches. So I'm not gonna have to do the clutches. Um, what I'm going to do is upgrade the springs from a 200 pound spring to an 800 pound spring. Now the spring upgrade from a 200 pound load to an 800 pound load will give me a net of 3,200 pound uh, spring load. After the initial inspection, and I've determined these clutches and steels are perfectly good, they're virtually brand new, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean all of the clutches and steels and get them ready for reassembly. Now when I go to reassemble them, you want lubricant on them, but since you're using the frictions against the steels, you want to use some of the uh, 80 90 weight mixed with the posi additive to coat these. That way you don't run into a problem with contamination and, uh, you know, premature wear uh, until the oil gets worked in from the differential itself. After I get those cleaned, this particular uh, differential, I didn't know what I needed to order, so I didn't order anything until I got it all apart and inspected. So now that it's uh, all apart and inspected. I'm cleaning everything, putting it back together just enough so that I don't mix anything up. Uh, so I'll clean the housing, the axle shaft, stubs, bearing races, and organize it so that nothing will get mixed up while I'm waiting for parts. So a lot of the little small parts I uh, clean up and get ready for Reassembly and now I have to reuse Put them where they don't get dropped on the floor So I'll have the ring bolts in there. I'll have the Snap rings for the axles. I'll put my clutch keepers in there Put my springs in there Put my spider gear washers in there. I don't want to lose stuff. You can see the keepers holding the clutches and steels together and those key way up into the carrier housing. So as you're putting it in, if you turn them a little bit, it'll make sure all the little teeth on the clutches are aligned. Next thing you want to do is put your spiders in to hold the gears in place. Here's the assembly technique I was talking about earlier. You can put an axle on the vise to set your side gear on. Before you do that though, make sure your keepers are aligned in the correct position. Uh, have a, one of your spider gears and thrust washers kind of ready while you're setting this on that axle stub. And then once you put that stub in, you can just turn the whole carrier and it will move that side gear and literally force that uh, spider gear in. Uh, Still takes a little bit of wiggling around and holding your tongue in the right place, but it's a, it's a good technique. And this will also work with a full-size axle shaft. You just put it in the vise and uh, roll them around. Sometimes, I, if you just notice, I put the thrust washer in after. There's enough room in the housing to do that. Otherwise, you got to keep that thrust washer aligned along with the spider gear. Once you get everything aligned up, Go ahead and put the pin in just to hold it in place while you're moving on to your next step. And you can also use this technique for taking these spider gears out instead of like I did with the channel locks. Okay, got the uh, spring kit in. This is a Yukon part number 29591. Uh, these are the heaviest duty springs you can get. So if you look at this, I mean, they're shorter, but that's okay. 
because the thickness has a much higher spring rate plus the thickness of the retaining plates makes up for the height difference once they're installed. Got these 3 8 bolts clamping these springs down here. There's no air gap between these. I put one bolt in this side just to get a corner started inside the spider gears and the side gears. Now I also chamfer these edges just a little bit because there's a lip on the side gears and you've got to get past that lip. Once you get past the lip, this, these are easy, but this is a real pain right here. This third bolt, you got to clamp it tight enough to where you can get it just started in the uh, carrier. But then you have to be able to hold it just on this edge right about there. So right about there, I'll carefully take this bolt out. I may have to wiggle it a little bit. And it's right on that edge. Once you get a little tension against the uh, carrier, it'll generally stay in place till you get that bolt out. In most cases, when I'm doing these, I'll, I'll be in this exact position, oh, six, eight times before I get everything lined up uh, where it really, it'll, to where it'll really go in. So if you're doing this and it's your first time or two, be aware you're gonna do it a couple times. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go right in first try. I've done enough of these and they don't go in second or third try a lot of times. So I need to just work this a little. That looks good there. Okay. I'm almost there. There we go. So it's still caught. Now I'm going to tap it in a little bit more. First off, make sure your drift pin's out when you do this. Well, it's in the vise because it's easier to hold that way. But uh, just so you know, it uh, took me about six tries to get this in here. And I'm not done yet, but I'm, I'm close. So... Once you get it, it started and those side gears are holding stuff down, tap it in kind of as close as you can and still get the bolts out. And then you can pull the bolts out because you're not going to be able to do much else. And I also will give caution. Make sure the little uh, thrust washers for the spider gears don't come out. Just use a hammer to continue tapping them in. If you have to tap very hard, definitely use a wood block or a mallet, but this is going in pretty easy at this point. Once you get your center pin lined up, I strongly recommend installing it. Make sure that thrust washer is straight. Once the drift pin's in, I also put the keeper bolt in, but I only put that in by hand because we will have to take it back out. 
The reason I want that in right now is because I don't want anything falling out once these gears are in. All right, now we're making some headway. Next, get the ring gear back on. Again, start these. By hand, don't don't force them. Once you have all the bolts in smooth, then you can do the star pattern, torque them. The last little bit of air gap, you can uh, draw it up, but you don't want to draw a ring gear up with two threads. And, I mean, you can freeze your carrier and you know throw the uh, ring gear in the oven at a couple hundred degrees if you want, but. Um, I never, I've never had to do that. I've just, you know, take my time and work myself around it. Rubber mallet goes a long ways. It won't hurt the teeth. Usually I really have to struggle with these uh, ring gear bolts because they're usually, you know, 130 pounds, but the torque on these early Corvettes is only 55 pounds. So I uh, don't even have to use the big torque wrench. I still use my chain wrench to hold everything in place just because it makes it a little easier. With the shims and races, the carrier goes in as tight as it came out because it resets the preload. And since I'm not changing gears, I don't have to worry about readjusting shim packs. Now remember I marked these. Up, down, left, and right. Just gonna snug these up. Snugging these up with a light impact will pull that carrier the rest of the way in and kind of seat it. Once it's seated, then I can worry about torquing it. Okay, wanted to point something else out. These bolts don't have lock washers, they just have a flat surface. Um, that tells me I either want to put a lock washer on here, which I can, there's plenty of room, or lock tight them. Now, I have a thing about lock washers, I know they work, so I'm gonna do both. I'll lock tight them and uh, put some lock washers on them. A Little bit of an upgrade, in my opinion, from factory. Technically, if they're torqued correctly, that'll keep the bolts from coming loose too, but I like erroring air, on the side of caution, erroring on the side of caution.
torque spec on these cat bolts is only 60 pounds on these. Let's see if I can hold this in place on camera. Okay, we have one more thing to do. We've got to put these axles in and put the snap rings on them. So this is the next part. All right, taking this piece out now. The nice part about these style of differentials is you slide the pin out and the spiders and stuff don't move because you've got 3,200 pounds of uh, spring holding everything together. Make sure you got some oil or grease so you don't goober up the seal. I don't know if I, which one I want to do first. Sometimes it's easier if you do. I think it's actually be easier if I do that side first. They're just kind of finicky, so. that you just get a high dollar rear end for. Yeah, I'm glad I did that other side first. This side's much easier when you uh, and it, it, it seated easy. So I don't know how much torque. I don't like testing those clutches with no oil in them. So I'm about finished up here. I'm just gonna put the cover on. Limited slit in addition to the recommended oil. So uh, I strongly recommend that, but this, this uh, limited slip friction wear, you really need to use it or you're gonna eat up those clutches fast. And as fun as these are to do, these are the reason I decided I really like lockers much better because it's mechanical. These springs and those clutches wear out, but uh, this will probably be the last one this Corvette ever needs to do. Oh yeah, probably have to put the pin in, huh? Good idea. Good idea, unless it doesn't go in. Get her straight. Quick. And another suggestion on these GMs with these float pins like this, don't tighten this up like a gorilla. I mean, it's, all, it's a quarter inch grade eight bolt has all of the torque spec of about 20 pounds. So tight, not over tight, and life will be good, not just for me, but for the next guy that's in here. All right, well, that's gonna do it. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it. 
cover glued on, ready to go. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.